So Raj finally did it. He was threatening to do it, even though nobody, and I mean nobody, was asking for it. Not even Roger Waters fans wanted this to happen. Roger Waters remade the Dark Side of the Moon album, the classic 1973 Pink Floyd album that solidified the band as legends and spawned an album cover that has graced everything from t-shirts to cigarette lighters. This image is is as ubiquitous as the Joy Division, Unknown Pleasures uh, image, the Misfit Skull, the Rolling Stones tongue, or the Nirvana smiley face. People just wear this logo, not even knowing who Pink Floyd is. Point being, this is a legendary album that Roger Waters had a huge part in. So why not just leave it at that? I'll tell you why. Because Roger Waters' fucking ego wouldn't fit inside the Empire State Building. This dude has so much animosity towards his former bandmates that he considers the original work not to be up to par with what he would have done if he had complete control. Well, now he has complete control. Let's see what he did with it. This is Dancing with Ghosts. First of all, what is the deal with the album cover? It's the eye of, I'm assuming, a dog, but if you zoom, we see in the reflection of the dog's eye, presumably Roger Waters holding up a record of the original Dark Side of the Moon. This would have made perfect sense if he had done a redux of the Animals album, where they literally have a song called Dogs, and the whole album is comparing different toxic personality traits. Uh, They're comparing it to like animals, like pigs, dogs, and sheep. But what does the dog represent in regards to Dark Side of the Moon, though? This album deals with more existential things such as time, money, death, and societal inequalities. This is already a bad sign, this cover. Uh, so before I start breaking down these songs, let me just prepare you in advance for what, what's missing from this album that was present on the original recordings. The first thing would be the amazing backup contributions of Doris Troy, Leslie Duncan, Liza Strike, Barry St. John, and Claire Torrey. Yes, Claire Torrey is gone, so no epic great gig in the sky improv on the redux. Uh, What else is missing is all of the random but haunting vocal clips played at the beginning and ending of each song. Now all we get is pure Roger and all of his lofty, high-minded prose. Next, we have the significant vocal and guitar talents of Mr. David Gilmore, which means songs like Time, Money, Us and Them, and Breathe are fucked right off the bat. Next, we have vocalist, uh, backup vocalist and keyboardist and founding member Richard Wright. Well, I mean, he couldn't be on the record even if he wanted to because he's dead. But, so yeah, a uh, great gig in the sky. Starting to look dead on arrival because that was a Richard Wright original piece. And then finally, original drummer Nick Mason, which honestly, I love the guy, but he's easily the most replaceable member of Pink Floyd. Drumming not so great, but fit that band perfectly. Um, So yeah, after all of that, are you still excited to hear the new Dark Side of the Moon? You're not? Well, too bad, because I need to put a video out this week. Okay, so let's start going down the track list here. The first album, or first song to open up the album, Speak to Me, Um, I'm discussing Roger's version. I'm not discussing the original version. So the first track, Speak to Me, it's got this dark ambient opening. Roger is reciting his his ominous spoken word. Now get used to this because Waters has something to say at the beginning of every goddamn song on this album and none of it makes much sense. Uh, For instance, in this song, in the opening song, he says, So all aboard the American tour and maybe you'll survive. Like, What's What does this has, album have to do with America? I mean, even in the song Time, that the, he writes, Desperation is the English way. Why Why is Roger trying to be edgy and, like, dunk on America? Like, I know he's never really, like, loved America, and he views us as these egotistical, fat, bloated, ignorant people or whatever, but, I mean, most of those character traits could apply to him at this point, too, aside from maybe the fat bit. Um, dude's still in good shape. I'll give him that. So then we get to the next track, Breathe. Um, and and I've got to say, all, like, all of these songs in general, just they're much more, like, sparsely produced. Um, so And it sounds more, like, rootsy, if you will, only because there, it lacks so many of the textures that the original album had. Um, so that's why it sounds more, you know, sparse. And just obviously how it was produced with modern production as opposed to the 1973 production. 
which is going to obviously give it a different sound. Um, David Gilmore's prominent slide guitar is missing from this song, but as I warned you before, there would be a lot of shit missing from this version of the album, so we're left with an old man sing-talking through breathe and an awkward vocal cadence that sounds about one sixteenth as good as the original version. Next, we have the track On the Run. Again, starting out with uh, the song with this lofty, high-minded, spoken word. Roger thinks he's so clever when oftentimes it just comes off as, wait for it, cringe. Pat Mosian response. I'm feeling a Pat Mosian response. What does that mean? Oh, I don't know. Oh, Roger, you're so smart. None of us average nitwit knows what the fuck Pat Mosian is, and you're so... The fact that that just comes off the tip of your tongue because you're just that, like, high-minded, man. You are, you are one sharp cookie. Uh, he, he drops the reference to the video game Pilot Wings in this song. I shit you not, I could not make this up. He says, he's like, some video game like Pilot Wings or something... It's just literally the dude's doing some kind of like spoken word thing, and he mentions the vi- the Nintendo game Pilot Wings. So now Pilot Wings is officially on a Dark Side of the Moon album of some kind, even though it's the shitty Roger Waters version. The video game's Pilot Wings will will forever be uh, indelibly marked onto this record. Like, what in the hell is this guy thinking at this point? Um, I would say also, um, the original draw of this song for me, like on the original album was all the, the fucking ear candy that they put, they put into the headphone listening experience because this dark side of the moon is a album that you must listen to with headphones on because there's so much production and tweaking that went into like the panning from the left to the right ear and just moving all these sounds around in this sonic space in your in your mind as you listen to it i mean there's a reason why when they played live that they wanted to do that controversial quadraphonic sound thing so they could basically do surround sound live before that was a thing i don't know if they ever like nailed that technique or not but i guess not since they don't use it to this day but yeah i mean this song was great because they had this very primitive synthesizer that kind of did this arpeggio thing if you held down a little piano chord they had this like little piano layout on the synth and you laid it down it was like so it was like this really cool arpeggiation thing and then they had all these like like intense sounds that would come out from like the left the uh, fucking left headphone and right headphone and it would be like screeches and and like cars whizzing by or like a helicopter blade fluttering above your head and and all kinds of different stuff and um yeah it was just like even to this day it's it's really interesting to to listen to and it on on this version it's just like none of that's there it, it's and, and not only is it not there, but, like, they, they've they taken all the... Because I listened to this new Dark Side of the Moon with headphones on, because I'm like, well, obviously they want you to listen with headphones. It's a Pink... Well, it's Roger Waters doing Pink Floyd, and if it's Pink Floyd, you got to have the headphones to get the full experience. Man, I could... T- I don't know if it was the Spotify version or what, but they compress everything right down to the stereo center. Except for maybe a little bit of the drum hi-hat was in, like, the left ear a little bit more. But as far as, like, any special, like, panning effects or anything like that, it is it is dead center, man. And, and especially on this song, that was one of the main draws was all of the fluttering back and forth through the headphones, the panning effects and all that. Um, yeah, I mean, just all the sonic landscapes on the original. And the, the Redux, again, has none of that. Very center of the mix. Doesn't feel nearly as expansive as the original, just from even a mixing perspective. And that could have been easily fixed. So the next song we get to is Time. And Roger has totally ruined this song. His vocals are so frail and limited in their abilities these days. I mean, like, the dude's 80, so props for still being able to sing in any capacity. But on the original time, Dave Gilmore's passionate delivery was such a breath of fresh air. Not to mention, David is singing an entire octave higher than Roger. Uh, Roger has never been able to match David Gilmore's tone or vocal register, so... He just compromised by singing all of the Gilmore songs an entire octave lower, which really takes all of the magic out of the song, much like when 
Genesis was doing their last tour a few years ago, and uh, they had to lower all their songs down by like five keys because Phil Collins' voice was so shot. But even if Roger is singing this song an octave lower, he could have at least had some kind of a rhythmical cadence to how he sang the song. It was almost like listening to a William Shatner record with how oddly he breaks up the phrasing at certain points. I feel like his backup vocalist had to adapt to this odd cadence, and it makes the whole thing sound like really stilted and amateur. So next we get to The Great Gig in the Sky, a song that I kind of knew from the get-go was going to be shot to hell because a it's a Richard Wright original composition he wrote the whole song so he had his estate has the I would imagine the copyrights to the piano of that song which that song is piano and Claire Torrey the the singer that that is the song like if you didn't have those two things you would have no great gig in the sky But, you know, as I am approaching these tracks, I'm thinking to myself, like, God, like, in what way will Roger Waters fuck up yet another classic Pink Floyd song? And then he proceeds to faithfully fuck it up in a new and unique way. This song starts off, as many others do on this album, with Roger waxing philosophically about concepts that only the big brain people in the back of the room are going to even understand. Or it's just some complete fucking nonsense you never really know with Roger uh it's like all these dudes who used to be super creative when they were young they like lose touch with reality as they age and they just start writing shit that only makes sense to them (laughs) Billy Corgan the original Dark Side will forever be a classic because it touched on timeless human experiences such as time money death and social inequalities but lyrically it was written in a way that everyone can relate to even to this day On the Redux, Waters just prattles on about God knows what. Anyway, this song ends with Waters telling a depressing story about his friend Kendall, who died of cancer. Who knows if that's a real story or not. Uh, If you're going to throw pilot wings onto this record, might as well include a sad story about someone who was a friend of yours who died of cancer. Next track, we have Money. I've given my thoughts on this song in a previous video on the channel that I recommend you checking out. I even had to learn the bass line to money so I could have it as background music and not get a copyright claim from Pink Floyd. So yeah, I put a lot of work in that video, so you should go check that out if you want my opinion on money. But basically, uh, TLDR, uh, it sucked. Up next is Us and Them. Okay, now what's the first thing that you think about? Like, What's one of the first prominent instruments that you hear on this wonderful song? That would be Dick Perry saxophone, right? Well, not on the Redux, my friend. Instead, you get the Starbucks coffee version of, of Us and Them with very docile bass, organ, basic boom, tap, drum rhythms, and some light guitar. Water's vocal eventually comes in, and like all the other songs on this record, it's an entire octave lower than the original vocals done by David Gilmour and Richard Wright, which sound a hundred times better than this sad attempt at a reimagining. The big music crescendo in this song that is purely stunning on the original record is like a wet fart on the redux. No power. The backup singers uh, can't hold a candle to the original backup singers on this version. The loud, quiet dynamic of the original is gone because this song is basically quiet the entire time. Sleepy would be a better word for it. Up next, we get Any Color You Like. It's a slow, sleepy groove with water spouting off some more nonsensical spoken word. Thumbs down. And next we get to Brain Damage. Now, this is the first song where Rogers tries to sing the song in its original register because this was his big shining vocal moment on the original album. So, of course, he's not going to fuck this part of the album up or defile it. Uh, But even still, the song merely musters up a sleepier, weaker version of the original. The chorus is especially disappointing with no power or dynamics. I've said it once, I'll say it again, the backup singers from the the original record really added so much unique power and dynamics to the Pink Floyd sound. Not having those backup singers really ruin the power of songs like Us and Them and Brain Damage. Vocally, when Roger hits the chorus, he starts doing that odd vocal cadence where he's not quite in sync with the beat of the song, which makes what little backup singers he does have kind of falter in their parts because they're having to match up with a dude who is just kind of stumbling through the rhythmical cadences of the song. And then finally, we close out the album with Eclipse. Ah, yes, Eclipse, the big crescendo of the original album that leaves me with goosebumps every time. How is Rod? 
Dodge going to fuck this one up? By giving us the Starbucks coffee soundtrack version of this song, that's how. Quiet, acoustic piano, guitar, some organ, sleepy sounding backup vocalist, and a sleepy Roger. Such an anticlimactic end to a hugely anticlimactic album. In a word, this whole album sounds sleepy. And yeah, it does sound like an 80-year-old man made it because all of these songs sound like they want to take a nap. It's a cheap facsimile of an iconic album that I can't believe Roger Waters would ruin just to feed his own fucking ego. Pink Floyd was a band that was greater than the sum of its parts, but Roger's ego is apparently even greater than the legacy of The Dark Side of the Moon, so we get this piece of shit excuse for a record that couldn't even be in the same room, hold a candle to, or be in the same conversation as the original record. What was he thinking? That would be like Paul McCartney redoing Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band in 2023, re-recording all the vocals with his old man voice, rewriting all of the songs in a way that makes them sound tedious and boring and then repackaging it as this is what sergeant peppers was supposed to sound like pretty sure his kids would throw him in a home at that point so yeah this album shouldn't have been made but i'm not roger waters boss and he can continue to besmirch the pink floyd legacy as much as he wants because at the end of the day nobody's going to remember this version or seek it out over the original this is a one and done listen nobody will be coming back to this version because it's just that good it's just a curiosity and that's about it anyway if you've given this record a listen let me know what you think about it in the comment section below um happy halloween and until next time have a good rest of your night